Today I'm going to show you how to make the whole cabbage version of Korean white kimchi. It's fermented so it's rich in probiotics. It's made with fresh foods that are nutritious and it's non-spicy unlike the well-known red kimchi. This is my second white kimchi video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a kimchi style called tong kimchi or whole cabbage kimchi. The cabbage is not sliced into one inch sections like with mock kimchi from my first video. Rather the cabbage is wrapped with its own leaves to make cabbage buns that are stuffed with the fresh, flavorful, and healthy ingredients. And again, this is a non-spicy kimchi, so it does not have Korean red chili peppers added to it. Of course, you can do so if you want. Let's get started. For this recipe, the measurements are based on a two pound Napa cabbage. If you have a four pound cabbage or a six pound cabbage, you will need to adjust the measurements accordingly. Weigh the cabbage either at the grocery store with their produce scale or at home if you have a kitchen scale. Step one, prepare the cabbage. Inspect the Naba cabbage and look for any leaves that are bruised, damaged, wilted, or yellowing and remove them. No need to wash the cabbage beforehand. Next, cut the cabbage in half. Place the knife anywhere from three-fourths to halfway on the cabbage, then cut through. Stick your thumbs in and gently pull the cabbage apart. Now cut in half each side to make four wedges total. Again, cut through around the three-fourths to halfway mark, stick your thumbs in the end, and pull apart. With whole cabbage kimchi, the stem base of the cabbage is kept intact, so ever so thinly, slice off the brown end of the root base while being careful not to compromise the root in any way where the leaves can come loose. Give the cabbage wedges a quick shot of water and don't drain. This shot of water is not for washing purposes, but so that the salt will better stick to the cabbage for the brining process. You'll need about one half cup or 150 grams of medium coarse salt. Korean sea salt is the perfect salt for kimchi making, but if that's not an option for you, kosher or fine grain salt will work. Just make sure there's no anti-caking agents added to the salt since some of those agents can cause a fermentation to go wonky. Look at the salt ingredients on the label. A good salt to use with any type of fermentation is one that lists only salt and nothing else. Sprinkle the salt in between each cabbage leaf concentrating the salt towards the root base of the cabbage. Be careful not to accidentally tear off any leaves and do this with all four wedges. If there's any loose cabbage leaf scraps, toss them in with the cabbage wedges. It will be a tight fit at first in the pan, but the cabbage will fit easier and easier as the salt process progresses. When done, place the cabbage aside to allow the salt to do its work. This will take a total of about four to five hours. Set a timer for one hour. At that time, we'll rotate the cabbage wedges. I'll show you what to do when we get to that point. Over the upcoming hours, the salt is going to pull the juice out of the cabbage and it will become wilted looking. This is the traditional Korean method of preparing Napa cabbage for kimchi. Step two, prepare the vegetables. I've got a link in the description for a printer friendly ingredient list, along with measurements in both American Imperial and metric, so everyone's happy. This is a daikon radish. Julienne or matchstick the radish. Korean moo radish is great to use in place of daikon if it's available to you. I like to further cut mine in half since I find it stuffs more easily into the cabbage when we get to that point later on. Add to a bowl. Do the same for the carrot. Peel, cut, and add to the bowl. Next up are green onions. Remove any browning or wilting layers. 
Then inspect each onion for limp greens and remove them. We want fresh, firm greens. Remove the roots. Then cut off the ragged top ends. Slice into sections and add to the bowl. This is a leek. Slice it up and then pop its rings out like this. Add to the bowl. You can use any color of bell pepper you wish. Choosing red or yellow are great options since they add even more color to the kimchi. Add to the bowl. Matchstick or julienne the cucumber or zucchini. Your choice. Peel, don't peel. Either way is fine. Again, I like to further cut mine in half. Add to the bowl. This is a chestnut and it's a traditional Korean white kimchi ingredient. They have a soft outer shell that can be peeled off. Either it can leave behind an orange skin like this or come off clean, exposing the creamy colored flesh. If yours leaves an orange skin, use a knife to further cut it off. Then roughly chop up the chestnut and add to the bowl. Depending on where you live and what time of year it is, chestnuts can be challenging to find. In this case, sliced almonds or pine nuts can be used instead. Lastly, slice two large dried or fresh dates. If jujubes are available to you, most commonly found in Korean markets, feel free to use those in place of dates. Add to the bowl. Next, we'll be adding the fish sauce. If you're vegan or have fish allergies, no worries, simply omit it. Although it doesn't smell as good as roses or fresh baked cookies, it does add a wonderful flavor to the kimchi that is not fishy, despite, well, being fish sauce. It is a staple in Korean kimchi and is sold at just about every standard grocery store in the Asian food section near the teriyaki sauces. Mix up the veggies to coat them with the fish sauce. This will also help the salt that we're going to add adhere to the vegetables. Sprinkle the salt over the top and mix to get it evenly worked through. The salt is going to draw out the water in the veggies and make a yummy juice that will be included in the kimchi. Set the bowl of vegetables aside. If you've got some time before the cabbage timer goes off, then this is a great moment to get a few things done around the house or in the office. The timer has gone off and I'm going to check in on my cabbage. Rotate the cabbage onto its opposite side to have contact with the salty water it's lying in. The cabbage is not as tight fitting as it was an hour ago when starting. You'll do this once every hour, so set the timer again. This is the second hour rotation and I'm going to do the exact same thing as before, rotating the wedges and rolling them in the salty water. You'll do the same thing again for the third hour. I think you get it now, so I'll skip showing you the third time and jump ahead to completion. Step three, rinsing the cabbage. It's now been four hours in total and this is how the cabbage should be looking, pretty limp. Make sure that the leaves are flexible and bendy without breaking. If they still have tension in them, leave them to soak in the salt water for another hour. My cabbage is ready, so I'm going to place the wedges in a bowl of fresh water to get the initial salt out. Then pick up one wedge at a time and rinse the cabbage with running water to flush the remaining salt out. Get in between all those layers, but do so gently as to not detach any leaves. Lay it down in a colander. Once all the wedges are rinsed, gently work out the extra water. Now we'll allow the cabbage to strain and drain for the next 30 minutes to an hour. Meanwhile, we can go to the next step. Step four, preparing the saltwater brine and broth. 
First, let's prepare the saltwater brine. Depending on whether or not you added fish sauce, the salt measurement will vary, and I give those numbers in the written recipe. I did add fish sauce, so I'll be adding one tablespoon plus one half teaspoon of medium grain salt to a quart of warm water. Give it a stir to dissolve the salt and set aside while we work on making the broth. Use an extra large apple or the equivalent of an extra large apple. The sweeter the apple, the better. Peel, quarter, and remove the core. Add to a blender or food processor. Peel and quarter two medium onions. Add to the blender. Next, we'll add fresh ginger root. Peel it, chunk it up, and add it to the blender. Next, add the garlic. Cut off the hard end, and then give it a whack with a broad knife to have the skins slip right off. Add to the blender. Lastly, add three cups or 710 milliliters of water. Blend until it runs smooth and silky like this. Now we're going to strain the broth. Pour it through a fine mesh strainer. Then take a spatula and work the liquid through. This will take a couple of minutes, so have patience. Work the pulp until it becomes dry enough to hold its shape when the spatula is pulled through. Discard the pulp or put it in the compost. I feed mine to the chickens, whichever you decide to do. With the strainer rinsed, pour the broth through again for a second time. Then add your saltwater brine prepared from earlier. Only a minimal amount of sediment should remain. The broth should be a beautiful, bright gold color like this. We're approaching the finish line and we're going to bring it all together. Step five, wrapping the cabbage. Remove the cabbage from the colander and place in a dish or on a pan. Add some broth over the vegetables. The food storage container is what will be holding the stuffed cabbage buns, including the broth. It needs to be deeper than a casserole pan, so when the broth is poured over top, it can fully submerge the cabbage. If it's not in a dish deep enough, the cabbage will be sticking up out of the brine. Oxygen exposure puts the food at risk of spoilage, so complete broth submergence is imperative to a successful and safe fermentation. This is an official kimchi container, and you'll see how it works when we put this kimchi all together. However, don't fret if you don't have one of these. Any type of food safe deep container will work. Place the cabbage scraps at the bottom of the container and pour a little broth over top. This is our base. Okay, let's get into wrapping. Pick up a cabbage wedge and separate out the two bottom leaves without detaching them from the stem. These are the two leaves that will wrap the cabbage. You can set the cabbage down again for the stuffing. Starting with the third leaf, place a light amount of vegetable mixture on the leaf, down near its root base. No need to fill beyond a couple of inches up from the leaf base. Do not overstuff the cabbage leaf. Allow the next leaf to drop and add a small amount of vegetables as you just did. Repeat until the leaves are too small or too thin to continue. Now it's time to wrap. Keep the bottom two leaves separated from the stuffed portion. Move one hand to be the cabbage support as the other hand folds the cabbage over. Use a thumb to catch the folding over and hold it down securely. With your free hand, reach under and select one of the two bottom leaves. Bring it up and over around the cabbage on the opposite side. Repeat with the other leaf to the opposite side. Wrap tightly without tearing the leaves. Place the wrapped cabbage bun, or the cabbage baby as I like to call it, into the food container. Repeat this process until you have all four cabbage buns. Because this can be tricky if it's your first time, I'm going to give you a replay of the wrapping process after having already stuffed the leaves.
With all four cabbage buns placed in the food container, toss in any remaining vegetables there may be. Pour all of the broth over the cabbage buns and the cabbage should be 100% covered. Place the lid or a cover on the container. And in my case, the kimchi container's internal lid will slide and hold the cabbage down beneath the brine. Stay tuned for the facts section because I'll show you an alternative way you can hold the cabbage down if you don't have a container like this one. Also, how do you eat the cabbage once they're ready? I'll show you. And if the cabbage wrapping part doesn't go as planned, I'll show you what to do to save the kimchi. So be sure not to skip the facts section. The fermentation period. Leave the kimchi on the countertop for 72 hours, then transfer to the refrigerator. In some Korean household traditions, they will eat the kimchi during the first three to five days. This is also known as the sparkling period when there are lots of fermentation active bubbles. Other Korean recipes will leave it in the refrigerator and allow it to continue slowly fermenting for three more weeks before eating. There is no right or wrong. I really enjoy eating the kimchi during the sparkling period, the first three to five days, but I can't eat that much kimchi that fast. So it lives in the refrigerator for the weeks and possible months to come. I continue enjoying its evolving flavors. So there we have the recipe portion of the video. Here's what's next the facts section. These are the topics I'm going to cover. What to do if you don't have a kimchi container to hold the cabbage down. How to eat the kimchi. What to do if things don't go as hoped. If you don't have a fermentation container like the one I used in this video with a built-in mechanism, then use glass fermentation weights to hold the cabbage down. You will have to go fishing for them later though when your cabbage is ready for eating. But that's what I did until I decided to invest in a kimchi container. Just make sure your hands are freshly washed before sticking them in there since you don't want to contaminate the fermentation with dirty hands. If you don't have any glass weights, you will need to dunk the cabbage in the brine a minimum of twice daily. This will prevent fermentation funk from developing as well as keeping the cabbage safer from potential spoilage due to oxygen exposure floating at the surface level of the brine rather than being submerged. How to eat the cabbage buns. Open up your kimchi container and either remove the weight or the internal mechanism like mine. Pull out the cabbage and place it on a cutting board. Cut off the root base, but don't throw it away. Add it to a vegetable stock or something similar. Now you'll cut the bun into sections. If you want to present the kimchi with guests, keep the slice whole and place it on a plate with some added broth over top. Beautiful. Or if it's just you and you wanna just get in there, place a section on a plate and loosen it up. Eat it with rice, fish, chicken, or noodles. There are really no rules and you and I can eat it with whatever we want in whichever way we want to do it. But if you would like more ideas, simply enter how to eat kimchi or kimchi recipes in the search bar and many lovely videos will come up for you to further explore. Wrapping cabbage like this can be really challenging, especially when it's your first attempt. If the wrap is a complete train wreck, do this. While holding onto the root base of the cabbage, let the bun unwrap itself downward as you continue to hold on to its root base. The veggies will fall back into the bowl and you can give it another go. Just be gentle as to not wear out the cabbage leaves or loosen them from their base since you need them to stay intact. And if this turns into a non-salvageable episode, you can abort the cabbage wrapping mission and make mock style kimchi instead, which is the vegetable sliced version instead of this wrapped whole cabbage version. Watch my first white kimchi video to see what I mean and how to put it all together. Train wrecks happen sometimes. In my opinion, this is an intermediate level technique, so don't be discouraged if it's not perfect. My first attempt with tong kimchi was a wreck and it became mock kimchi truthfully, but I gave it another try and it went better with the second attempt and by the third time I had it down. So don't give up. Besides, it's good for your brain to learn how to do new things. You've got this. Interested in learning how to make probiotic rich sauerkraut? Click this video right here. How about homemade fermented pickles? 
click here. And I've got an entire fermentation playlist of recipes and fermentation education right here. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye.